So now we've done our calculation. As I said, you know, we found where the piston moves. We came out, uh, again, you just take your two numbers, divide them uh, by each other and come out. And ours came out at four and a half. So we're gonna reset our degree wheel at four and a half and go ahead and lock it down. And that is good news for us because our can that we got from uh, Comp Cans comes pre-ground with five degrees of advance in it. So we know that our test on the top dead center and what they ground into it and the way the cam is set up is right on the money. We've got our five degrees of advance showing up in our calculation so we can actually go ahead and lock down the cam knowing that we're good to go. We don't have to make any adjustments on it. We zeroed it out, we checked it, came in with our uh, calculation and found our five degrees of advance that we expected to see when we checked everything. So then, so now that we've locked down our four and a half degrees of advance on it, we can go ahead and check our exhaust travel on the lifter. We'll, we'll show you that next. So, But we are happy, we, we've come in and we've checked our cam, degreed it properly, and we can lock it down because it's good to go. Okay, so now we've shown you the specialty parts that we use. The first, pro uh, first part of the process to degree our cam is to get our exact top dead center. Now, when we put on the timing set, you remember we lined up the um, dots on the crank and the camshaft gear um, to show us our general top dead center. But to what happens is the piston, as it's moving up, when it gets to the top of its stroke, the uh, connecting rod on the crankshaft can still move a few degrees without the piston head itself moving. So to find the exact top dead center, there's a calculation and some measurements we'll take to find out where the piston comes and stops moving and then where it starts moving again. And we can take those numbers and then divide them by each other to find that true top dead center. So what we're gonna do first is we've, like I said, we've got everything set to the general top dead center. We've got our gear marks lined up. We're gonna go ahead and take our degree wheel and lock it down on zero. And then we're going to move off of top dead center enough to run our stop plate bolt down. And then we'll lock it in place. That'll keep it from going all the way to top dead center, but it also will give us a way to measure either side of top dead center. And then come back and do our math on it. So we'll lock it in place. Now we'll come back up to just where the piston touches our stop plate. We'll take a measurement. It looks like it's uh, right at 15 and a half before top dead center. So we'll take that, we'll roll it around to the other side just till it makes contact with our plate. Right there. It looks like we're at 15 and a half on the other side. So what that tells us, if we take those two numbers and, and uh, add them together, divide them by two, that we're right back to zero. So we've got a good top dead center uh, marking. So now that we know where it's gonna be set, we can go back out. We'll run our stop bolt back out a little bit, <clears throat> go back up to our zero that we had and know that we've got a good top dead center measurement. Now this top dead center measurement, the reason you want to be as accurate as you can is because this is what's going to define everything else we do when we're degreeing the cam. You've got to have a good top dead center measurement before you can degree your cam in properly. So we're in, we know we're right at zero. The next part of the process we'll show you in a minute. First thing you'll want to do is take this uh, stop plate off so that it doesn't interfere with any of the other measurements, measurements we're going to do. And also make sure that you've locked this down as tight as you can. It's going to be very important that after you've found your true top dead center that you don't touch the indicator wire and you don't touch the degree wheel itself because any nudging or moving of it at all is going to throw all of your numbers off. So once you've got this set, make sure that you're real careful working around the engine not to move any of that stuff. Okay, so now with our lock plate and everything, since we've done our measurements, we know that uh, it's showing 15 and a half before top dead center and 15 and a half 
after top dead center. So what you do to get your calculation, if your numbers were different, let's say we had uh, 16 before top dead center and 12 after top dead center, you would take 16 minus 12, which would give you four, and you know that you need to go four degrees before top dead center when you set up your degree wheel. Since ours are the same, we know we can set up at true zero on our top dead center, and we can lock it down and then move on to actually checking and degreeing the cam. Okay, so now that we've got our degree wheel locked in where we know it's accurate, the next thing is to actually check our degree on our cam. Uh, we've got our dial indicator set to where the stem of it runs to the center line of the lifter itself. Got everything locked in. So what we want to do now is we're going to turn. The crank over until the intake lifter is at the topmost point in its duration and we're going to zero our dial to that lock it down and then one thing you want to do to check and make sure everything's seated properly is you'll want to turn it over a couple of times go through a couple of revolutions and make sure that it comes back to zero every time it goes around. That, that's how you know if you've got a consistent seat for the dial indicator to read off of. And it does come back to zero and then go back down. We'll do it one more time just to verify. It starts to move up and it's and you see it come back to zero and then it'll start falling in. So we know we've got a good seat. We're going to get a good reading off the dial indicator. So what we want to do is go back to zero where the lifter is at the topmost point in its travel and then we're going to go down 20 from it. And we're going to take a reading. Looks like we're at 75. So we're going to write that number down at 75. <clears throat> and we're going to get them back up to zero. And then we're going to go past zero back to 20. Take another reading, looks like we're at 129. So we're going to take 129, subtract 175. We've got the math out here. We take 129 minus 75 gives us 54. We divide that by 2, which is 27. So we divide by, we divide our 54 by 2, that gives us 27. We take our 75 plus our 27, we come up with 2, 102. Now we get our cam card out. If you come down here and look, we've got our intake center line number that comp cam gives us on the, uh, on the cam card. Where it's supposed to be is at 102. So we're right on the money. You don't have to make any adjustments. We're going to show you how you would make adjustments if your numbers didn't come out perfectly. But in this case, with our check, uh, our numbers are right on the money. We won't have to do anything for ours. But we are going to go through the process just to show you what it looks like. So when we checked ours, obviously I showed you the calculations. Ours came in right on the center line where it was supposed to be at 102. If you did have any issue with it when you do your calculation, obviously if you come off uh, different from what it's supposed to be, I would go ahead and check it two or three times to verify that you're getting a consistent number that's off. But if you do, this is how you would adjust it. Since we've got this Cloy's Hex Adjust timing set, we have the ability to make some fine tuning adjustments to our set. It's a great piece and it gives you this ability. Now, I didn't mention this earlier. The reason we're doing this, the reason we're doing a degreeing of the cam, we mentioned that it does affect your performance. What it's actually doing is it's moving the torque band of the engine up and down the RPM range. 
So if you're at 102, you're supposed to be right in the peak uh, RPM range for your torque band. If you're uh, retarded from that or uh, if you're advanced from that, it's going to move that torque range on that engine. It's going to affect the performance you feel on the engine. So let's just say in, in our case, if we had done our calculation, it was off. Let's say we came in at uh, 100 instead of 102. We're going to use our hex adjust to dial that back. Uh, if we came in at 100, we're going to be uh, retarding the timing to get to our 102. If we came in at 104, we're going to be advancing the timing to get to our 102. So let me uh, get a couple tools and we'll show you how that's done. So you can see on our cloise hex adjust, we have this adjustment piece here that rides where the dowel pin would be on a standard timing set that actually allows us to adjust the timing on this. You'll see that we have an A on this side, which means if we turn it this way, we're going to be advancing the timing. There's an R on this side, which means if we're turning it this way, we're going to be retarding the timing. So let's say, again, ours came in perfectly, but we, let's say we need to put a couple of degrees of advance in it. We would just take this and turn it. to the one or two degrees, whatever we need. If we needed to retard it, <clears throat> we would turn it the other way to our one or two degree point. <clears throat> Once we get it where we know we need it, we lock the bolt down on the cam and we're good to go. Again, I'm gonna go back to zero on ours just because we knew ours came out exactly where it was supposed to. We'll lock down our nuts or our bolts and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we've taken the degree wheel off. We're, we know we've checked our numbers. We're good to go with the cam. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go around on the cloys bolts. We're supposed to come to 25 foot pounds. So we've set up our torque wrench. This is the final time we'll have to adjust these. So we're gonna go around and check them one more time. Make sure they're torqued properly. All right, we'll get the rest of our adapter off and we'll talk about the next episode. Be right back. Okay, so we've got our uh, cam degreed in. We've got everything locked down and we're ready to move on to the next process. In the next episode, we're going to talk about heads. We're going to install those, show you the valve train, how all that goes together. As always, go to partspro.com to find your local parts pro dealer who can help you with this process or whatever project you have. You'll find in our description uh, information about all the parts that we use today, the specialty tools we use, the parts we installed. We also have a store locator link to go straight to the parts pro website to the store locator and find out more information about your local parts pro store. We'll see you in the next episode.